So is everybody awake this morning? Try to wake everybody up this morning and uh, make sure y'all are, y'all are good to go. So um, good to be here with you this morning. We're so proud that you're here with us. If you're a guest with us today, we're, we're so happy that you're here with us. Please take the flap of the bulletin that you were given when you came in, or there should be a card in a pew near you. Please take it, fill it out, put it in the offering plate with your information. We want to know who you are. We want to know how to get back with you and let you know how excited we are that you're here with us. So if, you're, if you'll do that for us, we'd really appreciate it. There are a couple of announcements this morning, one that's not in the bulletin that we want to make sure that everybody remembers. <clears throat> First of all, next Sunday is going to be the daylight savings time, so make sure you spring forward, and that means you get the chance to lose an hour of sleep, which is always fun, but, uh, but, but, but do make sure you change your clocks next week. Of course, we'll be putting that out on social media and stuff, too, but don't forget, it's always, it's always sneaks up on us, it seems, but uh, make sure you make that change next week. Bed ministry tomorrow night. Um, um, also be in prayer for our summer mission trip. We are making plans for that. And by way of that, there's going to be a meeting right after service, um, for the mission committee. If you can stay for a few minutes, we're going to be talking about some things. And then I uh, don't forget to put on your calendar, the winter Bible study, which is March the 22nd through the 25th with Dr. Ronald Mix. We're going to be studying through the book of Jeremiah. And we want you to be here. I don't know if, I've really enjoyed those the last few years, um, him coming and doing that. It's been a really good time. He's such a good teacher. And you will definitely be blessed for it. So make on your counter, uh, make that important to be here that those few days. Um, we do want to add to our prayer list this morning. Um, Brooke Greenhill, um, that was given as a prayer request this morning. Put her on your prayer list if you don't mind. And continue to w- remember um, the Betty Wallace family, Miss Lynn and all them. And then also uh, Mr. Billy's um, family, Miss Miss um, Betty and them. Keep them in your pr- prayers as well. And I do have a card this morning from them, if you would give me just a second. It says to our Mount Olive family, thank you for your prayers, your kind words. And the many expressions of sympathy our family has received since Billy's passing. The precious meal was a welcome time with family. A very special thanks to Brother Stanley for being by our side at the hospital and at the funeral home. Um, and then that's from Miss Betty Roberts and their family. Um, so if you, I'm going to leave that card here if anybody wants to look at that. If you would stand with me this morning, if you're able, we're going to read out of a Psalm in chapter 100. And this is what it says. Verse 1. Shout joyful to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not our, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Blessed be his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's bow forward to prayer. God, we do thank you and we love you and we are so um, excited to be in this place today with these believers. God, I pray that as your church meets, God, that you'll move, Father. I pray that you'll move across our land this morning as we worship you, Father. I pray that you'll that we will respond this morning to you, God, and that we will our hearts will be ignited with 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 fervor, with 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 courage to go into this world, God, and love people the way you ask us to. Father, to go into this world and to be compassionate and have a desire to share your good news with those around us, Father. I pray that for our, for our church and for churches across this land. God, I pray, for, Father, this morning for Brother Stanley and Brother Anthony as they serve you in this service, God. May you use them and, and protect them and show them and help them to be able to deliver exactly what you want delivered. And God, help us to receive what you want us to receive. And God, help us to respond as we should. Father, I pray for those on our prayer list, those that's been lifted up, those that's, um, uh, that we've maybe not spoken about this morning that are unspoken. God, we pray for those. God, we pray for those in our midst that have lost loved ones. And God, those that are going through sicknesses and tough times. God, we pray for healing and comfort. God, we pray for your hand to come around and hold tight to them. God, we pray for our church to be an opportunity to minister to those situations. Help us to come beside and encourage and to be there and to uplift and to help. Father, we also pray, God, we pray that you would use us in this community, God, to make a difference. Help us to, to be your, your bright, shining light on this hill, Father, for people to see and to come to and to find help. God, to find you, to find a loving God who truly loves us so much that you sacrificed your own son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray in thanks this morning for Jesus Christ. Thank you that you gave us the opportunity to know you for eternal, uh, eternally, God, because of your sacrifice of your son, Jesus. And we praise him this morning. In, in his name we do pray. Amen. While you're standing with us, let's have a time of fellowship, please. Okay. Short announcement. Thank you, Drew. Does anybody know what today is? Yeah, Sunday's good enough. 
Brother Anthony? It's Sunday. It is. Yeah. We're going to sing. <laughs> yes. No, I told him this morning, I asked him who's doing special music, and he said, Karen is, I think, her name's in the bulletin. He gets this fear look in his eyes every time I ask him that, because we're going to do a duet one of these days, and I don't think he's ready. <laughs> I always think he's ready when he says that. Yeah, so I got him guessing. But uh, two years ago this week, you came here. That's right. Uh, so actually, it's March 4th, so you can't open this until Wednesday. <laughs> we'll have a small uh, card of appreciation and a gift for your two-year anniversary with us. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love y'all. Well, it's so good to see you this morning. I can't believe two years have gone by that I've been at Mount Olive. It's been two great years. As we begin this morning, we're going to sing hymn 301, I Am Resolved. And we're going to do the first, second, and last verse. <laughs>
Hymn 337, I know whom I have believed. We're going to do the first, second, and fourth verse this morning. second and last verse.
thank you, Karen and Maddie, for that special, uh, beautiful song with a great message. Um, I want to ask you to turn your, in your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to finish up my series today on setting the right example. I've enjoyed this series and looking at this one verse of Scripture out of 1 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul is writing to a young preacher boy about how to behave in the church of God and how to relate to people. And that's somewhat of the context of, of um, this letter and this chapter as well. But also, um, just to help prepare him for the times that are coming. And those are times that Timothy lived in and times that we live in as well. A time in which there are people who are hostile to the gospel. Uh, people who seem to be out for what they can get and what they want out of life without giving any regard to God and His plan or His will for their lives. So in the middle of all that, Paul says to Timothy, uh, don't let anyone despise your youth. Just because you're a young person, if you will live for the Lord and set the right example, then they will look at your life and see that you know Jesus and that you love the Lord and that you have a desire to live for Him. It's not about your age, it's about your maturity. And that's what it's really about for all of us as well. Uh, having brought this message from one verse of Scripture, it's what we call a textual type of sermon or series where the words or the outline comes directly from the text. And so what I've been doing is taking these words, these virtues, these things that Paul says we're to be a good example in, and taking that and applying it to our lives as well. Not just for preachers, not just for young people, not just for uh, middle age or uh, senior folks, but for all of us. So this morning I want to, because this is my final sermon in the series, I want us to read all of chapter 4. There's only 16 verses, but I'll ask you to stand as we read if you're able to stand. If you're not able to stand, don't worry about it. Just remain seated and follow along in God's Word. So again, for context, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1 of chapter 4, and we'll read the whole chapter and focus on verse number 14. I'm sorry, verse number 12. So verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on, on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profit, profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We ask you to bless the reading of it today, to open our hearts and minds to receive all that you have for us. Father, I pray for the lost here today that they'll be saved. I pray for Christians that will be strengthened that we'll confess and repent our shortcomings and our sin before thee and give you thanks for the forgiveness that we receive through faith in Christ Jesus. 
Father, you're so good and so gracious. Thank you for what you're going to do during this time. And may our worship be in spirit and in truth. May it please and honor you as our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. So again, we're focusing on verse number 12. And we've already talked about setting a good example and a right example, as Paul says, to the believers in word. That's our speech. It's the way that we talk. In conversation, which is our lifestyle. Setting a good example before others by the way we live our lives. In charity, that's the King James word for love. Setting the right example by loving God and loving others. And then, of course, um, in spirit. Um, having the right spirit. Having a generous and a gracious spirit uh, before the world. And now, um, we'll talk about, well, we've talked about faith as well. Uh, setting the right example by being faithful to the Lord and now in purity. The last thing Paul says, be a good example of the believers in purity. When we think about the word pure, we think about something that is, that is good, something that has not been contaminated by something else, unadulterated, something that is, is good and right in its purest and best form. You know, I think about people all over the world who don't have good... Uh, drinking water. I think about us, we can turn on the faucet and, you know, unless they've been cleaning out the fire hydrants, you know, we've got good clear water. But in third world countries, there, there are places where they don't have clean water. It's contaminated. It has bacteria in it. It has disease in it. And oftentimes it makes people sick and sometimes to the point even where they lose their lives. If only they could have the purity of water to take into their bodies uh, to keep them good and strong and vibrant and healthy, how good and important that is to their lives. And so in the same way for we as Christians to take in the pure, unadulterated Word of God, to take in the purity of the Spirit of God in our hearts and in our lives, to have our thoughts pure before God, to, to know that the Word of God says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, knowing that the purity we receive is that of the Spirit of God working in us. It's not in and of ourselves. We're contaminated with sin. We're contaminated by the things of the world. But the Word of God is good and pure and right for us. And it keeps us desiring more and more of that which is good and pure and right in God's sight. The more we take in of the contaminations of the world, the more we want that. But the more we take in the purity of God and His Word, the more we desire and want that. And the stronger and healthier we become in our Christian lives. Paul said, set a good example before the believers in purity. Keep your heart pure. Keep your life pure. Stay pure before God and before others. And so we have to drink from that pure water of the Holy Spirit of God that has, um, that has sealed us, who lives in us, and who works through our lives. And so a life of purity is going to set the right example for believers and, of course, for the world. So what can we do to set that right example? So, number one, I'd say to you that we need to make sure we continually pursue purity in our lives. We search for it and we pursue it. Um, we stumble when we don't search for that which is good and pure and right. That is, um, pure words and pure emotions and pure thoughts. This is what we need. But too often, um, we get contaminated by impure words or impure emotions and impure thoughts. And so I want to share those three things with you as we search for purity. We want to be careful to stay away from impure words. James 3, 9 and 10 says, With it, speaking of the tongue, we bless God and our Father. And with that same tongue, he says, We curse men who've been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. He says, My brothers, these things ought not to be so. And so it's very important for us to make sure that our speech is pure, that our words are pure and right. And so in the context, again, of, um, of the chapter, Paul is going to talk about uh, speaking lies in verse 2 in hypocrisy. And so saying those things that are impure through um, hypocritical words, Oh, we say one thing to one person, but when we talk about the same subject to someone else, it's completely different. 
And so that becomes impure words and a hypocrisy that we speak. And so Paul wants to make sure that Timothy is saying the right things and saying the right things always. Don't say one thing to one person and something different to someone else. Keep your words pure before God, free of hypocrisy. Don't get involved, as Paul tells Timothy later on in the verses, in old wives' tales and fables, gossip, and those type of things. And if we're not careful, we as Christians will be guilty of that. And we're setting the wrong example when we begin to say hypocritical things or we, um, we begin to, to gossip and say those things that are wrong. Secondly, impure emotions we have to guard against. In Matthew 5, 21 and 22, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said of those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, Whoever is angry with your brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And so Paul's talking about not only the things that we say ought to be pure, but the thoughts that we think need to be pure as well. And so you can say, well, you know, I've never murdered anybody, I've never committed adultery, and those type of things. But with our thought life, Jesus said, we can do those things. If we're angry with our brother without a cause, it's murdering them. Murdering their character when we talk about them. If we say we've never committed adultery, but we lust, we lust after others or things, and we've committed adultery in our thought life uh, and uh, in, in those things that we think about daily. And so we need to pray for God to keep our thought life pure and before Him. And so I know that these, you know, are hard standards to keep, but there are things that, that we should uh, make sure that we keep uh, good and right. So these uh, impure thoughts and these impure emotions that we have uh, as well are standards that we are to keep and set the right example before the believers. Make sure that our thought life is where it needs to be. Make sure the things we say are pure and good and right and that we keep our emotions in check, making sure that our heart is pure before the world to set the right example that Jesus lives within us. We care more about what Jesus thinks than we care about what the world thinks and what we say and how we act. Secondly, we need to make sure we set our hearts on purity. Set our hearts on purity. So what is a pure heart? Uh, a pure heart is linked with a, a good conscience and a sincere uh, faith. And so if, if we look at... Um, Verse number, let's look at verse number 5. Um, I'm sorry, verse number 6 here um, in chapter 4. Paul says, if you, if you put the, uh, the brothers in remembrance of these things, you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ. You'll be nourished up in the words of faith and good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. And so getting that good word, those good words of God in our heart, our heart is is uh, described as the seed of the will in the Bible. It's, our, it's not just emotions, but it, it is who we are. It's our mind, it's our heart, it's, it's who we are. And so we want purity to be a part of who we are. So not that people just see our, um, our character, or see, or not our character, but our reputation, and they think, oh, that person's a good person, they've got, they've got a good reputation. But more than that, in our heart we have a good character because that is before God. That is actually who we are. And so it's, it's linked with that good conscience and that sincere faith. And a pure heart is when God has your heart. A pure heart is when, when you love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, the Bible uh, says. A pure heart is where God has control of your heart. And you let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you in your everyday life, in everything that you seek to do and be. And if God doesn't have your heart, He really has nothing of you. And, and so that's why we surrender our heart, we surrender our lives unto the Lord Jesus Christ to make us pure. So how do we obtain that pure heart? Once again, that's through repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through honoring Him and asking for forgiveness and receiving that forgiveness of Christ, and uh, then we continue to ask God to strengthen us and help us be all that He wants us to be. 
So a pure heart is a heart that thrives before God. It's not a lukewarm heart that makes Jesus sick, but it is one that is hot before God, hot before people, loving people enough that we want to make sure the Word of God is living in us and we're sharing that good Word of God with others. That we know sound doctrine, as, as Paul taught Timothy in this chapter, and that we read the Word and that we share the Word and we get the Word of God in our heart. Uh, it's, it's asking God to renew us daily, every day, on a daily basis. It, it's what God wants more than anything else from you and me. It's a heart that loves Him and a heart that loves people. And that's why He said the greatest command was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And so we only make our heart pure, only, only God can make our heart pure and can judge our heart to be pure. It's possible to fool people sometimes, right? We can fool people, but we can never fool God. Not once. And so our hearts need to be pure before God. That's an example we need to set. Something we need to set before our children, because they see our hypocrisy. They see how we act at home and how we act at church. If it doesn't match up, then they can see that we're not sincere in heart that our heart is not pure as it needs to be, that we're not setting the right example. People that we work with every day, if they know we love God or if they know we're saved and we go to church and we try to serve God, but our life doesn't reflect that in the workplace, then it reflects hypocrisy and impure heart and life that doesn't set the right example and doesn't honor our Lord Jesus Christ. May we have a pure heart uh, before God. C.S. Lewis wrote, It is safe to tell the pure in heart that they shall see God, for only the pure in heart want to see God. I think about Mr. Billy. Mr. Billy Roberts. And the pureness of his heart. And setting such a good example before all of us. in loving God and loving others. And I heard his dear daughters and family talk about him last week and the great example that he set for them and and how he loved them, how he loved the Lord Jesus, how he's prepared to go see him. The pure in heart want to see God and be with him. May we all set that type of example. And then thirdly, we need to make sure that we're looking for and seeing the need for purity. I want to tell you, we need our lives pure, and the church needs to be pure before God as well. There's too much of the world that's contaminated churches today. And I pray that we'll keep the world out of the church, but that we as the church will go into the world and let the purity of Christ be seen in and through us. I don't care how young you are or how old you are here today. We all have the responsibility as God's children to see the need to live pure lives and set the right example before others. Nobody gets off the hook. Doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, where you are in life, what you're doing, or what your circumstances is, we can always set the right example of purity before the world. And God calls us to do that. So how do you know you're ready to receive that pure heart? The thought of sin disgusts you. And you hate your sin. You begin to hate your sin as much as God hates your sin. And you pray and ask for that. And ask for God to make you hate sin as much as he hates sin. Asking power from God to overcome impurity in every area of our lives. And know that it doesn't come from our own human strength, but the power of God working in and through us. Knowing that God is ready, willing, and able to help us. Now having that pure heart doesn't mean that we won't have personality characteristics that may get on other people's nerves, you know. Or that we, that we won't fall sometimes. We won't slip and say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. But it does mean that we can have freedom from sin by having pure motives and the power of the blood of Jesus keeping us safe in time of temptation if we'll only depend on Him, if we will only trust in Him. John Wesley, of course, we know, the founder of Methodism. Uh, he was a great Christian, and he preached the gospel, and he loved the Lord. And his main scripture passage for understanding this truth of the entire sanctification process, which really is, is a part of purity, was Matthew um, 5, 8, as we've said, the pure in heart, or those whose hearts who have purified even as he is pure, who are purified through faith in the blood of Jesus, he says, from every unholy affection. 
being cleansed from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfect holiness in the loving fear of God. That healthy reverence of God. That desire to live for Him and to honor Him and to not just try to go the way of the world and just be politically correct or culturally correct, but rather seeking to be biblically correct in the way that we live our lives. To know God and love Him more and more should be our desire. To set a, a, the right example of purity before the believers and before all. Apo according to Apologetics Press, story I read there, there's an animal that's found in some spots in the state of Minnesota as well as some other places of similar climate. It's a weasel-like animal called the ermine. The ermine is a short-tailed weasel. It has a unique feature that can ch it can change the color of its fur in the snow to white. And, of course, that's its defense against prey. And uh, that, that coat, that fur becomes snow white, and it blends in and mixes in with the snow to protect it from others. Fur hunters in, in northern Europe hundreds of years ago in Asia would take care of that or, or take advantage of that unusual characteristic of that ermine, that little weasel. If they wanted to catch it, they would find the burrow where it would go in the ground. And they would take oil and grime and all types of things and put it around the hole, the opening where that ermine, that weasel would go in. And when that ermine would get to that hole and see that dirt and see that grime and see that to go inside the burrow to safety, it would have to go through all that muck and grime, which of course would stain uh, its pure white coat and make it vulnerable to prey. It would not go in the hole. It would not take a chance on getting stained by that which was around the hole where it had to enter in. And it would take its chance on losing its life to prey rather than being contaminated by the dirt and the grime. I want to tell you there's a great spiritual lesson in that as well. Rather than be contaminated by the world, I pray that we would put our lives out there on display. And if we even have to give our very lives, we'd be willing to do that rather than give in to the dirt and grime and contamination of sin and the world that makes us vulnerable to the prey, but pleasing unto the Lord. How important it is for us to remain pure in our Christian lives, to live that life of a, a good example before the believers and the world that would bring honor and glory unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you, you know this is true. We all do things. We all have some sin in our lives. We've all made some past mistakes that, that was sin against God. And we look at it sometimes as a spot upon our lives. But I want to tell you something. The precious blood of Jesus Christ can make you white as snow. His forgiveness and His cleansing is good and right and pure in your life. And that's the only way we can be cleansed and pure. We can't clean ourselves, not enough soap to scrub it off. But the Lord Jesus Christ, through his forgiveness and cleansing, can make us white as snow. That's what his precious blood did on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. And so, as God's children, we have that continual cleansing from God. The danger becomes when we don't hate our sin and we begin to embrace that, rather than embracing the forgiveness that we've already received in Christ and desiring to continue to live for him, and remain unspotted, as Paul says, from the world. So I pray today, if you're here and you're lost, you can be clean, you, that you will be cleansed because you can be. Cleansed from your sin through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. By grace through faith are you saved, Paul says, and not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of ourselves, it's by the grace of God. And God wants you to, today to be cleansed, to be clean, to be pure, and to be saved. If you're here today and you're, and, and you're saved but you're not living for the Lord, just confess that. Agree with God about that, what's going on in your life. He already knows. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He will cleanse you today, restore that fellowship you need with Him, 
and help you to set the right example before all of the world. Individual Christians that are, that are pure before the world, churches that are pure before the world, not perfectly sinless, we know we're not that, but cleansed by the blood of Christ, trusting in Him and following Him. That sets the right example before the world. And so today we have an opportunity, opportunity to respond to God's Word and to be in right fellowship with Him. We're already right with God because we have trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But if you're indulging in sin, known sin in your life, confess that, turn from it, let that fellowship with Jesus be restored and live for Him daily. The altar's open. That's why we have an altar here. It's an old-fashioned place to come and get before God. If I can help you from God's Word or pray with you, I'll be glad to do that. Whatever God's put on your heart to do today in just a moment, we're going to sing a hymn of response, and it'll be our time to respond to the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit who leads us. So I'm going to ask you to bow with me for a moment. Brother Anthony and the musicians are going to come and get ready, and, and we're going to sing, but more than sing, we're going to get our hearts right and pure before God. It's my prayer. And we're going to surrender our hearts to Him right now. And let Him do the work that He wants to do in us. Oh, Father, do that work. That work that you desire in your church, in the lives of individual Christians. Oh, Father, may we open our hearts and surrender them completely to you now to let you do all that you want to do in us and through us. Father, I pray for the lost that they'll be saved, that they'll have the courage to come down front and, and share that with the church and confess Jesus before men. We'll rejoice with them today in that decision. For Christians who are struggling today because they're away from you, they've gone to that far country and they're in the pig pen, wallowing around. May, may we see, Father, that there's no need for that. or that we, we can get up and come to you, that you're always waiting there for us and you cleanse us and make us pure. Father, I pray for those that are struggling, Lord, in, in other areas of their lives. Father, I, I pray for peace and comfort and strength and all the things that we know only you can give. As a church family, help us, draw us close to you, Lord, and close to one another, that we might encourage one another and pray for one another and, and be there for one another. Thank you for your precious word and how you bless us with it. And now as we have this time of response, may you be blessed, Father, by the surrender of our hearts to seek purity in our lives through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. And as we sing, this is your time to respond to the Lord, publicly or privately, whatever way God's leading you. The
for your prayers and your kind attention in the service today. Just a couple of things I want to mention to you. We need to meet with the mission team down front here immediately after the service just for a few minutes. And um, we we're praying about our mission trip and we've, we've got most of the details worked out. Just kind of going to finalize that a little bit. Okay, so yeah. So Billy Roberts, uh, Kathy Chisholm, Ronnie Bullock, Deborah Cunningham, Drew Allen, and Robbie. Okay, so down front here just, just for a moment. So we have announced on Wednesday night, many of you weren't here, maybe you haven't heard, but um, Mr. Neal and Ms. Dale Wallace, longtime wonderful members of our church who have passed on and gone to their heavenly home, have remembered Mount Olive Baptist Church in their will. And so they've left the church a gift, and it's a portfolio of stocks and bonds and that sort of thing. And so um, we should find out probably in the next week or so the value of that um, and uh, what all that will entail. We've just got to get some paperwork done and get that uh, an account open and get it transferred into the account, and then it'll be uh, according to the pleasure of the church what, you know, what happens with that as we seek the Lord's direction in it. Uh, they didn't put any stipulations on how the church uses it. So, thinking about long-time, wonderful members of this church, so faithful and so good and so involved, and then remembered their church family as they went on to be uh, with the Lord. What a blessing that is, and what an example that would be for all of us to follow as well. My wife and I have done that. We have the church in our wheel, and, and so um, I think it's a wonderful thing because nothing we have here is ours. And we're not going to take any, any of it with us. And so to bless your church family is just such a wonderful thing to do. And so we're grateful for those two wonderful members of our church. And, and so we'll give you more details as we have those uh, along. So um, this afternoon, of course, we'll meet um, at 5 o'clock for discipleship training, worship at 6. Deacons will meet after, the church, after church tonight, a business meeting on Wednesday night. Uh, do be, be much in prayer for our winter Bible study coming up with Dr. Ronald Meeks. So we'll do a Sunday morning through Wednesday night uh, on those dates in March 22nd through the 25th, studying the book of Jeremiah. So I hope that you'll come and be a part of that study. It'll be a wonderful study through the book, Old Testament book of Jeremiah. And Dr. Meeks covers our prayers, and, and uh, so let's remember him. Um, also, I just want to say we're glad you're here today. If you're visiting with us, we love having guests worship with us here at Mount Olive Baptist Church. And you are so welcome here. We're glad to have you. And if we can help you in any way, please don't hesitate uh, to let us know that. And then um, also, of course, so glad Miss Betty and, and some of her family can be here today. I know it's so hard that first Sunday after your loved one's gone on to be with the Lord. And so, Miss Betty, we love you and your family. And got your girls here and, and grandchild and so we're just honored that that y'all are able to come today and so thankful for you and for mr billy and miss betty and what they mean to our church family all right anything else before we dismiss today anything i forgot or did wrong Judy? <laughs> all right i love you all very much so thankful for your encouragement and love to us and and just the way that you've received us. And uh, we love you all. So let's bow together and we'll have our closing prayer today. So as we have that closing prayer, I'm going to ask Billy Roberts if you would dismiss.